This is the 2022 Audi TT RS. This is the 2022 Audi RS3. Under the hood is a 2.5 liter turbocharged inline five cylinder. It has a 2.5 liter turbocharged five cylinder engine. This car has standard Quattro all-wheel drive. The RS3 comes standard with Quattro all-wheel drive. And a seven-speed double-clutch gearbox. And it has a seven-speed dual-clutch transmission. The TTRS has 394 horsepower and 354 pound-feet of torque. The RS3 has 401 horsepower and 369 pound-feet of whoa, torque. Whoa, hold on, did you say 401 horsepower? Yes, I did. Well, I have 394, it's the same engine. It's better. It's better. We're going to go find out. Okay. Let's go, Paul. last year of production for the United States market. Yes. Unfortunately for us, not last year production for European market. And you can still get a TT in 23. You can't get a TTRS. You can get a TT, a TTS, no TTRS. Of course, Bucky. I wonder why. <laughs> like, is, was it a sales thing? I, of course, they're gonna blame sales. People aren't buying it, you know, whatever the case may be. That is a huge loss for US in my opinion because this car is flipping amazing, it, Paul. It's, it's a beautiful car. I mean, just gorgeous. And the RS added visuals just make it look just so nice. So this is the third iteration of the TTRS for the US market. And um, I want to say it's the best. You know, they always try to get better and better and better. <laughs> we try to improve. But the yes. Mark II had a five cylinder engine and a manual. Uh huh. Oh, so this one does not come with manual? No. DSG ah. only. So, you know, yeah. the DSG is great. Seven speed, double clutch, awesome. It works great. Very yada, fast. Yada, yada, yada. Yeah. But I will say, around town, if you're in auto or comfort, it's clunky. Yes. It, it almost reminds me of somebody who just learned how to drive a stick. You yes, because when I drove just a regular A3, I was noticing that as well. Yeah. If you're hot on it, if you're hard on the throttle, then the DSG is amazing. It shifts way faster than I ever could, you know, blah, 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 blah. And the, the reason same, why same. Ferrari and everybody else uses yeah. it, right? Well, so. you can't get a manual Ferrari or manual Lamborghini or manual McLaren, and so on and so forth down the line. Yeah. That's too bad. Because what's so cool about this car, and this is my opinion, is it is the best all-around sports car on sale today. That's a pretty bold statement. It is a bold <laughs> statement. You know why? It's a supercar slayer. This car does zero to 60 in three and a half seconds. Okay, very three impressive. And a half yeah, very impressive. I know some places have clocked it at 3.4, even 3.3 three, three I've seen. Audi claims 3.7, 3.8, something like that. They're always Regularly, 3.6, 3.5. Yeah. So yeah. three and a half seconds to 60. In this little tiny car, it weighs 3,200 pounds. It has massive brakes up front with eight piston calipers. Eight. Yes. Eight. Eight. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> but like, they're still steel though. They're not carbon ceramics. Carbons were an option. Oh, they are an option, okay. But it's pricey for what it is. But I will tell you, okay, I had one of these. 2018, the first year of the Mark III TTRS. I bought a TTRS and I did it through Audi exclusive. And this is before Audi canceled their European delivery program. Okay. So I actually took delivery of my TTRS in Germany. Oh, that is so cool.
Oh. Spent five days driving the thing on the auto. Oh god, breaking that is it in. So cool. I had the car for two years, you know, sold it to a gal who still hasn't refused to sell it back to me. <laughs> Everybody in my house said I was an idiot to sell that car. It was the best car I ever had. And I'm like, why? No, I didn't like the shifting. I want to shift for myself, you know? But you flip these little back seats down, you could fit two guitars and an amp in the back. I guess that's important for somebody. It is important for me. <laughs> Maybe not you, but you know, like, two huge luggage bags and a couple carry-ons in yeah. this hatchback because hatches rule. Yes. You know this. I, you have a Focus RS. I have a Focus hatchback. RS. I love the hatchback, yes. I have a Mark 7.5 Golf R that now my son has. Hatchback. Hatchback. Because hatchbacks rule. That's why that statement that I'm saying comes with emphasis behind it because you've got all-wheel drive, you've got a unique engine with an awesome engine note, which, you know... <laughs> That, sounds like that. That five cylinder is. It's half a Lambo V10. Yes, and it sounds amazing. It really does. So it's got a unique firing order, one, two, four, five, three, and they should make t shirts out of that. They really should, because it does sound amazing. It sounds really cool. Now, the downside to testing this car today and comparing it to the RS3, which we're going to do, is there are literally 267 miles on this car right now. So it's very green. It's super green, and um, I don't want to get rid of it this time. So. You know, I so kind of want to take care of it. <laughs> and while the RS3 is well broken in, press car, <laughs> with 6,500 miles, this one not so much. But what's different? RS3, TTRS, same platform. Yes. Same transmission, same engine. Same engine. Different brakes, different suspension. This actually has magnetorheological dampers, which the last RS3 also had, and Audi got rid of it in the new car. Audi said in their press kit, that the suspension in the new RS3 is a step beyond Magnaride. Which I'm not buying. <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, this is in comfort mode. You've had a chance to drive the RS3. In comfort mode, that thing's still a little bouncy. How does this feel? This feels really, really nice. Yeah, um, it does feel like it's a comfort suspension. You know, it just very softens the bumps. It just glides over things. It's kind of like a almost, need I say, luxury sedan. And in a car that's this short, yeah, that's saying that's something. That's saying something, yes. Magnetorheological dampers are used by Ferrari. Yes, because, because they make it tiny adjustments in microseconds. Fractions of microseconds. Like, it just yep. doesn't matter. It's doing its thing. And this is, it's an okay road, but you know, there's bumps. You can, yeah. you can sense that they're there. I don't feel it. No. I'm going to put it up in it's a dynamic super here. super fast recovery. So now we're in dynamic, which it automatically puts it into sport mode for that seven-speed clutch. And now you can feel the undulations, yes. right? I mean, I this feel, is I feel, definitely I feel, like, I feel it harder now, yes. The steering also firms up a little bit. And, of course, the shifts are way different. And the brakes are great. No, the brakes are great. Oh, my gosh, that is... Oh, that, that is great. I think I set the pads now. Yeah. I think everything's seated. That's that's good. Ooh, and you get the little blip. Did you hear that? Uh, that's yes. not me. I'm not using the paddles. Now, here's something I like in the TTRS. You've got this old school Prindle here. Okay? Yeah. If I want to go to manual mode, bloop, over there. Yeah. And now it's set in manual mode. Period. Done. And the RS3. The RS3 doesn't get that. You've got to actually pull the paddles uh, to activate it. To activate it, mm -hmm. which you can do here when you're in the drive thing too, but I don't know. How do you unactivate it then? Like if you, you want got to go pull back. back down on the Porsche like uh, shifter okay. to drive, and then it'll be drive, and then you can you can do that two different ways. So if you're in drive and you pull it down, it goes to sport. No matter okay. what mode you're in, okay, it'll switch to sport. Gotcha. In here, you flap that over. Yeah. And you got the thing, and you know you're there. I like that. I don't know. Also, I, I I always been one that just likes to kind of have that knob for your hand, you know, and having that little I don't even want to what you want to call it up. Oh, the Prindle thingy. Yeah, a little. it's it's like in the Porsche 911. It's like yes, the I know they they did it, which is cool. I mean, it actually works really well. It's yeah. way better than 
you know, Mercedes stock up here yes. or some of the knobby and, things And I hate the get. dials or yeah. the buttons are even worse. So, so it's, it's clever. Yeah. And the fact that it's, you know, DSG only, no manual option, fine. You can do something like that. But I like the fact you can just slam this over and you know you're in manual yeah. mode. Also, I love the engine start stop yes. button here. Very a la Ferrari. And I like that we get the exhaust mode button down here. The shift paddles are different on the RS3. They're a polished sink. Now, these are like plastic. Okay. We just feel the back of that. Yeah. Oh. oh, baby. Yeah, when you drive it hard, obviously, the transmission is great. It's when you're stop and go traffic, it kind of, it's got a lot of creep to it. It does. You can tell it's really a manual. You yeah. Know? It's not a With automatic. An automated, automated clutch pedal. Oh. And I love how the tack lights up. Green, yellow, red, as you get closer up the red line, which I'm trying not to do because I have 272 miles in this car now. Does this have a head-up display? This does not ah, okay. have a head-up display. That's something Audi added for the RS3, and I love it. I think every car, even if it's not a performance car, should have a HUD. Yeah. It really should because you keep your eyes on the road, which is also interesting in this car because you get one screen. Yes, That's it's it. missing the big display screen. There's no center screen. Yes. Audi's virtual cockpit started with the R8 and then came to the TT RS and the TT, I guess, in the regular one too. But it's really cool because this is a driver-centric car. There's no question about that. And you can't even turn radio stations. I mean, you can play down here, but you have to look over to my instrument binnacle yeah. to see what you're changing it to. And I do like in here, in the TTRS, that on the MMI controller, you can write on the top of it. You can use your finger and write on mm -hmm. the top of it. So when you're putting a nav, you can kind of just write with your finger and... Spell it, it out. It spe <laughs> spell it out, whatever. And, and the thing is actually really good at doing it. Well, I'm uh, glad it's di driver centric because you certainly aren't going to put any one of the two <laughs> back seats back there. You know, one of the coolest cars ever made was the McLaren F1, right? Because center driver, yeah. two passengers. This car actually is a three person car. Because if you move the passenger seat forward, <laughs> then you can sit two and adults. Then, and then, or, or on lay, the across, side. lay across. Lay across. No, you can get two adults on that side. I've done it before. And then you've got a parcel shelf behind you. Yeah. It's a three person car. Because there's no way I could even put a kid behind me yeah. if I'm driving. There's yeah. nothing. There's here. nothing there. There's nothing, nothing at all. <laughs> it's terrible. But the chassis dynamics, the handling dynamics, the steering on this car, I can't think of a better year round, all purpose, all weather, live in Wisconsin, and you want to drive your fun car all year. There is nothing out there. Oh, you put some snow tires on this thing, it's un unstoppable. <laughs> it is. <laughs> And the Focus RS is gone from our market, but that can't touch this. It can't touch it in build quality. It can't touch it in just general demeanor and feel, in my opinion. You own one, you yes. tell me, am I wrong? For sure, this is a much more refined vehicle in every way. Uh, the Focus RS is way more raw. The suspension is just- <laughs> it's Punishing. Punishing. <laughs> so that's the one thing that, the older I get, the more I hate the suspension on that car. But it's a fun car, it's manual, right? You got the uh, all-wheel drive system, so there's a lot of fun there, but it just, you know, it, it's, it's, it came out in 2016. Yeah. You know, so yeah. it's, it's, it's starting to get uh, dated now. Well, this came out for 2018, and they haven't updated. Audi has not updated. There's a few minor little changes, cosmetic stuff, you know, this flat bottom steering wheel, the suede Alcantara on the sides. My car had a full leather steering wheel, and it was a round wheel. The wings, the winglets on the side of the wings, the end of the wings, that's changed. The shape has changed. Okay. But the tech has not changed at all. And that's what's exciting on the RS3, is you've got two different RS modes to play with, and one is the drift mode. Yes. You know, where you can really, because this has, um, what, electro-hydraulic multi-plate clutch on the prop shaft. The RS3 has two electronic multi-plate clutches on the drive shafts, both yes. drive shafts. So the way that this puts power down is a little more antiquated than the RS3. The RS3 is way more techy, and you don't get drift mode in here. What you do get is unstoppable grip, 
tenacity, traction out of turns. Well, the the goal for the RS3 was to give it a little bit more of that rear wheel drive feel. Yep, exactly. Uh, and that's why they went ahead and used that different system. Because they are based on front wheel drive architecture. Correct. You know what though? How about you take a spin? Sure. It's funny that when this car first came out, Audi actually rated it at 400 horsepower. Hey now, no red line. No red line. Oh, sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Five is okay right now. Okay. When this first came out for the US market, Audi rated it at 400 horsepower. And then okay. some emissions things changed and everything oh, else. Whatever. Thing. You just say it's 400 horsepower, you know. 354 pound feet of torque, which is also a little different than the RS3. But. Yes, this is comfort mode. You're not yeah. wallowing around, but you're also no, not being no. punished by No, no, not at all. It's really nice. <laughs> it feels feels like a proper car, you know? Right? Like, yeah, yeah. Ah, okay, so this is, so everything's like on the steering wheel. Yeah. That's pretty cool, actually. Right, so hit that, and it pulls up the screen, then hit it again, and then you change your modes, auto dynamic, there you go. Oh yeah, and then. <laughs> I feel a difference. Yeah. <laughs> I feel a difference. Feel the steering firm up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, steering firmed up. Firms up. Throttle, of course, changes. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Sorry, Jeez, oh, beats. <laughs> <laughs> Got a little carried away on the throttle. <laughs> so this car has the same size wheels and tires on all four corners. The RS3 is staggered. Yes, wider on the front. Staggered weirdly, front, or it's wider on the front. Wider on the front. Narrower on the rear. Yes. Sixty percent weight over the front. That's part of the reason why. Yeah. Well, it's kind of the Audi curse. They really don't make cars with a 50-50 weight balance. No. They're all This is much front closer. Heavy. This, this is, is yeah. much closer. It's like yeah. 52, I think 48. Okay, but on the RS3. But this is 3,200 pounds. Okay. The RS3 is 3,600 pounds. Yeah. Just a little portly for a car that size. Oy vey. Wow, love the little pops and little, uh, Lips when you I'm shit. telling you, you know, you get all your HVAC in this cool little clusters here. There, there's no big screen. It's literally just your passenger along for the ride. Yeah, I can turn on my heated seat and I can adjust the fan because I can see these temperatures. And yeah. Stuff here. When you turn all this off, <laughs> you know, these are just like knobs and oh, do they feel good to the touch too, don't they? Yeah. You know? Yeah, nice tactile feel to it. Oh, yep. yeah. And the clicks. When you turn the fan speed, click, 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 click. It feels like an upscale cabin inside here. Yeah. No question. And even though it's the same MQB architecture, it's the same transmission, it's the same inline five cylinder turbocharged engine, it's basically the same car. Very, very well related cousins. Yes. Base price on the RS3 is 58 grand. Base price on this car is 75. Now, how are they justifying that? It's a cooler car. <laughs> <laughs> That's just a lowly sedan. I just think the bang for the buck, which you don't normally say on a car like this, but the bang for the buck in this car, it is a supercar slayer. It's a it's a special car. It feels special. It drives special. Mm -hmm. And it just it just is a special car. I'm sold. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Plus usability. I mean, cripes. Love this car. No, it's it's uh, it's great. And now that I'm finally driving it, because this is literally first time behind the wheel, just my first impressions, is it just has a solid feel to it. Uh, it really takes the bumps well and smooths them out. And like this road is really choppy. Yeah, it is. But yet, I can feel the that. the firmest suspension right I can, now. Too. Even with the firmest suspension, all four wheels are always touching. There's no, there's no like gliding or lifting or, you know, where, where you're like airborne, you know, <laughs> it's it just, it's, it's just planted. Steering wheel feels great. Yes, it does. When you turn left, the car turns left. When oh, you yeah. turn right, the car turns right. There's no slack. There's no, oh, you know, what am I going to do or, or anything like that. It's just, it just, it goes. Also, you know, seating position. Very nice. Seats are comfortable. Visibility too. Visibility is great. Look over your left shoulder. Yeah, no, because you don't have that B pillar in your right. right. You know, so it's great. I do see the tail, the the, the back uh, end there. Yeah, it's low enough where it doesn't. It's not like it's in the middle of your uh, right. your view. So it's it's really nice. Yeah. 
<laughs> when it's in sport mode, it really wants to hold those revs. It's hilarious. And the back end doesn't get squirrely on you, even nope. under, even under hard acceleration. I think it's a winner. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, it's it's a special car. That's that's the word for it. And it's too bad that they're no longer going to make them. Not for the U.S. And you know what they never brought here? The TTRS Roadster, which they've always had in Europe, which is too bad. That's Ooh. uh. <laughs> Ooh, that's a shame. Ooh. <laughs> Let's see how the RS3 stacks up. Yep, okay, sounds good. Not the tightest turning. No, it's weird. Turn to lock is like one and a third. See? And it's not that good. The TTRS, you can just whip yeah. around within its own wheelbase almost. And this guy, not so much. That's one negative thing about this car for sure. And like the TTRS, you get the virtual cockpit. Yes. I changed it from that weird hockey puck thing mm. to the two gauges. You know, and you can go in here and you can change all the settings and that and whatever. But um, And in this car, you can do it too. I can. <laughs> You can mess with the virtual cockpit right there, the head-up display right there. And yeah, I've got a screen. It's canted towards you quite a bit, honestly. Yeah, yeah. But what I don't like, however, is in the TTRS, right in the gauge cluster, always, no matter what mode you're in, what screen you've got set up there, full screen nav, whatever, you can always see the oil temp. Oh, here you can't? No. Oh. Depending on what mode you're in, you can see it. And with the two gauges like that, no, you can't. But you can go to... RS monitor, and you can get all the temperatures here with the okay. oil pressure and everything else. There's your G stuff, your tire pressures. Yeah. Which okay. on the TTRS, because you only have that one screen, that one yeah. 12.3 inch you know screen, which works great, you can scroll through the wheel and you can get all that stuff right there, right in front of you. Okay, so you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Five hundred miles on this car, we can do that. Yes. So, uh, what mode are we in? We are auto, auto. Right. and I can change drive selector here. <laughs> yeah. We'll put it in dynamic, bouncy, bouncy. Ooh. Ooh. See, so now you're in sport, shifting. Oh, hi. So, it feels sportier. For sure, yeah. You do feel that extra 400 pounds, there's no doubt. I do feel the rear pushing a little bit more than in, in, in your car. TT? Yeah. But I also feel a little bit of understeer. It's Audi. It's their hallmark. <laughs> And you know I like power on oversteer. Yeah. These seats actually don't hold me as well either. You're the right, bolster is right. not as, right. as big you're, as the TTRS. Absolutely right. I just noticed that. I'm kind of as, sliding, as I'm out sliding, sliding over yeah. here. It's a comfortable seat, no question. And I love that both cars have the little thigh bolsters there, the little thigh extenders. Yeah, I think that's, that's nice because nice I have long legs. So yeah, it's nice. That's, Everybody that's should nice. have those. Everybody should have huds. <laughs> thigh support. See what I mean? And this you know what? feels like a different car. It does. It does. And you know what the other thing? Well, now I didn't push your car as, as much as I'm pushing this one, obviously because I didn't it's, <laughs> because it's brand I have new before, and, and, and it's your car. And I have before. Yeah. And they but really drive different. They do. And the transmission, I don't know, it just does something a little bizarre. It like almost robs you that initial power for like a millisecond and then gives you the power. The boost is a little later. Yeah, it's just, it's just, it's a little, I mean, that's something you just kind of get used to it, but. Because when this thing is on boost. <laughs> yeah, when this is on boost, it's, it's, it goes. It's singing a nice song, no question. Yeah, it's got that little push yeah, there. Yeah, it does. It doesn't bother me though. 
Does it bother you? No, because it's just the dynamic of the car. You just have to learn that right. that's how it's going to work. Right. And, you know, you adjust your driving because okay. you know that's going to happen. You now, know, what's like, interesting, though, about this setup, like we were talking in the TT, the, you know, multiply clutch system is different. There's one in each drive shaft in mm -hmm. here, electronically controlled. And this car can send 50% of its power to the rear axle. Yes. Where it can send 100% of that too. power to one wheel. Yes. Which, depending upon which RS mode you're in, yeah. you know, will help you lessen the reins a little bit or help you rock it out of a corner by putting all that power to the outside wheel. You know, like if you're doing a hard left turn, then it's going to send all that power to the right rear wheel to push you out of that corner. Which is pretty cool. See what I was talking about before, you don't get that, you can't just slam this thing over to manual yeah. mode. Like if I pull down on this, you're in sport drive shifting right now, right? Yes. If I pull down, now you're in drive. Yeah. Regular, regular shifting. So pull back again in sport. So if you want manual, you gotta pull a paddle. Gotcha. Yeah. And I when I was downshifting, I was pulling the paddles yeah. and then you know put it back onto yeah. um, to drive there. And it's nice, you can kind of jump back and forth, whatever, but yeah. I just I really like to have that. Throw it over there. I know it's in manual mode. Mm -hmm. now. Yep. I'm now responsible. Yeah. Because this won't shift for you. Here you need to be looking at the screens more. In your car, you can kind of feel it. Yeah. But it is. It's got some. Uh, it's got some power, that's for sure. <laughs> 401 horsepower in the U.S. market. A little bit more than the European market because we don't quite have a strict an emission system here. Also, it's supposed to be louder than the European car. It is louder. But in here, you've got four doors. You've got four real seats. Yep. It's a very practical car. Not that I'd want to sit behind myself. I can fit in the back. But I fit in the back by straddling the back of this seat. Yeah. <laughs> or that seat. Yeah, it definitely it's a more practical layout for more than two people. Yes. Because that hatchback can swallow so much. Yeah. You can put these back seats down and have a pass through to the trunk, which is great. The trunk by itself, though, opening's kind of small. It still swallows stuff, but yeah, you well, get you in there, you don't get, get out of there. You, don't, you never get as much as a hatchback. Yeah. No. See? So, definitely pros and cons to both. Can I drive it? Can I drive it? Yes. I would drive it. Okay. Oh, mamacita! As my grandpa might say, oofta. Ooh, that back end lifts up a little bit, doesn't it? <laughs> Ooh. Because that's the difference between suspension and the TTRS. Yeah. I don't know. I'm going to still call malarkey on this. Uh, this is an upgrade from the Magna Ride. I don't think it is. I think they're, they're two different suspensions and they both work very well, but to call one an upgrade and one a downgrade is, I don't think is accurate. Yeah. I guess they didn't say it's an upgrade. They said it's moving on from. We wanted to save $303,000 or <laughs> whatever, so we took that out. Yeah, there's a little understeer there. Oh, jeez, oh, beats. Now it doesn't feel like 3,600 pounds. It doesn't feel its weight, but it does feel heavier than your than the uh, TTRS. The TTRS, yeah. Because it is. About like 400 pounds. Yeah. And you definitely feel that. There's some understeer. <laughs> <laughs> the brakes don't feel quite as uh, as grabby. Yeah. Now these are a little more broken in too than that brand new TTRS, but you got bigger pistons on there, and I actually think bigger discs too on the TT. Okay. This definitely freaking hustles though. Holy cannoli. Smile to my face. 
you're not doing much talking, uh -huh. you know you're having a great time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see how good these brakes are. They're good. Yeah. They're but solid. They're really good brakes. Yeah. Brake feel is actually really good too. You're right though. If you're not in, if you're not in boost, it's kind of like, eh, yeah. Eh. Okay, I'll slow down a little bit here. So I like, I'm not usually a fan of Alcantara on a steering wheel because it wears differently than leather. It, it wears, yeah. But it feels really good on the TTRS. It does, it does feel good. Because it's just those two sections in Correct. here, all full leather all the way around. I like that. Steering wheel feels great. Yeah. The little, you know, sort of golf ball feel to leather, this. Yeah. Kind of feels weird in my hand. What do you think of that? I actually like that. Um, you know, it, it's it's, Designed so your hands won't get as sweaty. Yeah, I, I kind of like that. I like the steering wheel feel. It's nice and thick. Yeah, I like to feel these paddles better. Yeah, the, the paddles do feel better. Polished zinc. It's kind of nice. I like that there's hard touch points, hard buttons yes. for for HVAC, HVAC for the drive select, for your heated seats, all that sort of stuff. And I I've heard people say that it, the interior of this car isn't befitting a car that's sixty thousand dollars base price fifty eight. This is more. With the options it has, I think it's okay. It's definitely okay. They put their money where their mouth is. They, they, yeah. The money got spent on the drivetrain, on the five-cylinder engine. Yeah, definitely. And the layout is great. I mean, the TTRS is completely driver-centric, obviously, but this is very similar vein. This screen, you got a second screen, 10.1 inches versus the 12.3 virtual cockpit. And these screens are like super high definition. They're, they're so they're pretty. Very nice. <laughs> so pretty. I've had a lot of people, or I've heard a lot of people comparing this to a Golf R. And that's unfair. It is unfair. Because the Golf R would really like the Audi S3 or the TTS. Then you've got the same engine as a Golf R, you know, that sort of thing. Sure, it's all MQB architecture, but this is not a Golf R. So to say, you know, I'm gonna go buy a $40,000 Golf R instead of this $60,000 RS3, it's two totally different cars. It is two totally different cars. And it really surprises me, Paul, how different the driving experience is between these two cars. To have the same sort of running gear. Yeah. The same engine. feels so different. Same chassis. Uh, that they do really feel different. Different brakes, different suspension, different tuning, obviously. And I don't know. The, the TTRS, to me, feels more like a true sports car. This feels like a true sports sedan. I would agree with you 100%, 100% yeah. And and is it redundancy that is killing the TTRS in this country because they've got an RS3 now? I don't know. Audi's never going to answer that question for no, us. No. But I think they're different enough that they could have kept them going here. Yeah, they, they definitely are. When you look at them paper, you wouldn't ever guess that they How drive different so these are. Both really solid cars. You know what I think we should do? I think we should get some numbers. I think we should go to our super secret testing facility and uh, do a couple launch controls. Uh, and see what do we I have get. to wear the bag over my head again? Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry, oh, Paul. Man. I'm sorry. <laughs> At least I won't airlift you in this time. <laughs> I'll, I'll let you ride shotgun. Okay. <laughs> Sound good? <laughs> Sounds good. All right, let's take this to the super secret testing facility, see what I can do. Oh, are we finally here? Oh, we made it. <laughs> nice. What is this place? Super secret testing facility. Brand new, uh, well, you know, black top. Nice. Uh, yeah, so it gives us a chance to safely test launch control. Ah, of course, yes. Which Audi says, we go, let's see, dynamic. Good. Turn off track control. Good. Put our foot on the brake and we stop it. Try it again. 
Not horrible. Maybe the tires needed to be warmed up a little bit. <laughs> the engine's warm. Everything's good. Showing green on our RS monitor. We'll do it again. You know what we'll do? We'll do it in RS mode. Okay. You know what? I think it might make a difference because the parameters on the rear traction change. Right. Exactly. So that might actually do something. Okay, so, so we're gonna go RS. Performance. performance okay nice we got the little looks like we're doing a burnout so that's good okay okay so still sport mode da, 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 da. everything looks good foot on the brake foot on the gas launch control program activated wonder twin powers activate 4.18 Yeah. Probably not the lightest people. No, in the world. no. In fact, they probably test us with like 120 pound flyweight. <laughs> probably. <laughs> Generally, with two people in the car, subtract about two tenths of a second. So it puts us right at about 3.9. Sounds good. Well, it sounds good. I'd like, I would like to. Would you mind if I did it once? No, not at all. Not at all, Paul. All right. Maybe your foot's heavier than mine. Safety first. Okay. Launch control program activated. 4.2. Damn. Four seconds. I don't know. It's like a 75 degree day, 76 degrees. We're on blacktop. Sitting in the sun, there's no clouds. I know, it just... The tarmac's warm, the tires are definitely warm. Everything's showing green here. The RS monitor. I just don't get it. Maybe it's because it's a press car and it's been abused. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, I am done with you. I will take no more abuse from you. All right, I'm going to try this one more time. Okay. A different spot. A little bit different spot. Okay. All right. I'm gonna push this time too. I felt tire slippage. 4.02. Okay. 3.8. That's 3.8. Yep. Okay. Well. Right. That's pretty good. Right around where Audi says it should be. All right. Ish. We should run it against the TT. Yeah. Maybe just once. Okay. I'm just curious to know. But before we do that, yeah, I just want to do a simple break to gas. Okay, sure. Just to see how that affects the no launch control. Just yep, yep. light turns green. The guy next to you went for it. You were ready for it. And you just hit the gas. I'm down for that. Come on, baby. <laughs> you can do this. I don't think we're gonna get four seconds. I don't think so. Okay, ready? Yep, light screen. <laughs> lag, 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 boost! 4.99. All right, so. Full second. A full second slower, yeah. Because <laughs> if we subtract our two tenths, yep. we're at 4.8. This car needs boost. So you gotta you gotta be on that boost, otherwise it's gonna be yeah. a little disappointing. Yeah. All right, let's put it against the uh, okay. the TTRS. The not broken in yet TTRS. One launch control. One launch control. Okay. Let's get them in the mode here. Dynamic, traction control off. You ready? Yep. Three, two, one, go! In the end, both Paul and I agreed that the TTRS is a uniquely special car. It looks exotic and surprises in its tenacity and outright performance. The RS3, on the other hand, is an amazingly accomplished sport sedan, but its added weight and less refined ride definitely set it apart from its corporate cousin. 
But if you are a performance car aficionado and you need the year-round performance that Audi's Quattro provides, getting behind the wheel of either one of these five-cylinder powerhouses will definitely bring a smile to your face.